Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the 1987 motorized action packs. There were eight of these all together, four Cobra and four G.I. Joes, but for this review I'll only be taking a look at the G.I. Joe versions. Next week I'll take a look at the Cobra ones. Now the gimmick with these is that they were action figure compatible backpacks, but when you took them off, they had little wind up motors and they activated features which turned them into weapon systems or accessories or little vehicles. Unfortunately, they made no animated appearances and made no comic book appearances either. The four 1987 G.I. Joe action packs were the radar station, the anti-aircraft gun, the helicopter, and the rope walker. The radar station was the simplest of the G.I. Joe action packs. It had a radar dish, which was the crank for the wind-up feature, and you have your on-off switch here, placing the on-off switch in its off position, in other words pointing towards the back peg. You just twist the radar dish around in this clockwise fashion, and then release the on-off switch. And now in order to get the radar station into its backpack mode, you simply flip up the front legs and then flip in the rear leg. And that's it. Like I said, the radar station is the simplest of the G.I. Joe action packs. You just put this peg onto a figure. I'm just going to use the 1987 sneak peek for instance because, well, he was used on the artwork and I think this really goes well with his uh, M.O. But you could actually use a figure which has a more, I guess, complementary color scheme, though. And you just fit it onto his back like that, like an ordinary backpack, and... Whoops. Hang on, whoop. Yeah, this thing is rather back-heavy. So back-heavy, in fact, that the instructions actually tell you to put the figure into a leading forward position in order to keep it on there. That's pretty bad. However, there is one bright spot, and that you can still use the radar in the backpack form. Let me just put this around again. And I guess this thing is visible to whoever is standing behind him. Next, we have the anti-aircraft gun. A nice little artillery piece, permanently slanted upwards. On the back here, we have some molded in shells. I'd say that they were bullets, but they're rather large for that. And these things, which almost look like handles, are actually meant to be feet to help the stability of this thing. Just sitting like this. Anyway, this thing actually has a traditional crank knob, which you rotate forward. And on the opposite side, we have the on-off switch. It's in the off position, pointing towards the back peg. So you click it backwards. And the whole barrel moves back and forth like that. Now, in order to put this into its backpack mode, I'll just turn, turn this thing off. What you have to do is you have to push this thing in. Here I'm going to use 1987 Fast Draw as an example. I think he has very complementary colors actually. And you just plug it in once again, just like a regular backpack, nothing special there. And unfortunately, you do have to lean the figure a little bit forward. 
which, while it negates the whole anti-aircraft thing by making the barrel a bit level, again, it's level, so you can shoot at regular objects now. However, there is one extra little thing we can do, and that this target reticle, little scope thing, you can actually twist around the barrel. And while it doesn't line up with the face, you get the impression that he is now looking through the target instead of being behind it operating from the rear. Now, as you can see, this thing also works in backpack mode. Next, we have the most popular of the G.I. Joe action packs, the helicopter. Obviously very popular because unlike the others, it's not an accessory, really. It's more like a little vehicle, which I guess makes uh, any figure a pilot. On top of that, though, we do have little molded in mini guns here. So this does double as a weapon system as well. On the very bottom, we do have a traditional crank wind-up mechanism. And on the back, this is the switch. It's pushed to the right in its off position. And if you pull it to the left, here, I'm going to use my 1987 Jinx figure, and mostly just because it's, you know, it's on the it's on the card art, rather than her being the acknowledged helicopter pilot. And of course, we just have the simple back peg thing going here. Just put her on here. The handles are small enough to put the hands on, but I'm not really going to do that because I'm kind of worried that the plastic is going to crack off if you do that. And this is one figure that, while you do have to lean her forward in order to stand her up because of the weight, obviously being a flying mechanism, it doesn't really matter whether you have her kind of in an awkward position or not. Now, despite the fact that you could actually just leave the helicopter just like the way it is, it does have a backpack mode. You simply fold in the rear fins, and that's it. Yeah, you don't do anything with the helicopter blades or anything like that, and honestly, it doesn't look any different from uh, its other mode. As a matter of fact, I like to actually put the arms out of the way, but according to the instructions, you're not actually supposed to move the arms. They are actually just friction pegged in there. They're not even permanently in there. However, there is a diagonal peg right here and a diagonal slot for it to go into. So if you put it on there, you can see if you rotate it forward, it actually kind of snaps onto that peg, making it kind of immobile. However, you can just pull it out a little bit, then rotate it all the way up, which is how I like to display this thing when it's in its backpack mode. And finally, we have the most complex of the G.I. Joe action packs, the Rope Walker. This was a mobility device which used these hooks on the top to walk along this string. The string was included, it's, a, it's an 18 inch long nylon string, which was unusual. Most G.I. Joe toys actually used either a black nylon string or black cotton string. It had one included hook. It would have been nice if there were two on either ends of the string, but we only got the one. And for a figure to ride along on, they would lie flat in this sling, which is connected on here, which you can just actually pull off. The whole thing comes off on these little hooks which are uh, attached on the ends. In addition to carrying a figure, you could also carry weapons or backpacks or other equipment in there. But these things on the tops are actually weapon clamps. 
There aren't any weapons included with this toy, but you can totally put rifles on there. You just put them on. Like that. Either forward like that or upside down. I'm just going to use a 1987 Outback figure here. Mostly because he's on the card art. You just lie him flat with his feet just kind of sticking out. Then wrap these around the hooks. And that's the way he looks when he's in the sling. Unlike any of the other G.I. Joe action packs, this one actually has a direct Cobra variant. The Cobra Rope Crosser. It's also a very similar name. And while they use a different mechanism in order to go across the rope, the rope included is exactly the same. The hook is the same mold, although the Cobra version is a dark brown, whereas the G.I. Joe version was silver. And the Cobra version has the exact same weapon clamps. In order to activate the walking mechanism, this strange thing is actually the crank knob, which you turn. And unlike the other G.I. Joe action packs, which had a traditional switch for the on and off function, we actually use the bar to switch it on and off. Here, in its upright position, it's in its off position, but when you lower it, and here it is in operation. In order to put the rope walker into its backpack mode, you have to take off the string as well as the sling on the bottom there. Again, they just detach from these little hooks. First, we'll take the string and actually put it on the bar here so that we can just wrap it around the previous hooks on the bottom. Which I'll have to admit is not a very easy thing because the hooks on the bottom are really only meant for the sling and not this thicker rope. But as you can see it does work and it can be held in there if you're patient with it. And then you use the hooks on the side which weren't previously used to place the sling on. And you just place both of the holes on the ends of the sling through one side and wrap around underneath and fix it on the other side. And that's it. Now you're ready to place it on a figure like good old Outback here. And once again you do have to lean them a little bit forward just so that it counterbalances the weight. And unlike the other action packs, this is not operational as a rope walker anymore in this backpack form. But you still have access to the weapons clamps so you can still have them carrying some extra weapons on top of that. I'm not exactly sure why, but the 1987 series of action packs, both G.I. Joe and Cobra, were not very well received by collectors and toy buyers in general. These things actually sat on the shelves for seven to eight years. They were just that unpopular, with the exception of the helicopter. Now, these things were very highly produced. So there's tons of them on the aftermarket and you shouldn't have to pay very much for them. As a matter of fact, they're fairly cheap. 
probably some of the cheapest things that you can actually find still sealed on the card. However, as much as I like them, it's hard for me to recommend them simply because of certain factors, like the fact that a lot of the mechanisms just seize up over the time. And it's hard to tell whether these things work or not from photographs. You actually have to go after certain sellers to actually test them out before you buy them from them. Now, as far as individual action packs go, the easiest one to find simply intact is, of course, the radar station. It doesn't have any uh, small parts to come off or break. The most popular one, the helicopter, the blades break fairly easily, and the arms pop off by themselves and get lost. There's also a left and right version to the arms, so you have to be careful of that. As for the anti-aircraft gun, the scope is actually a separate piece which can be lost, and sometimes you don't even notice that it's missing in photographs. You just have to be aware that it's supposed to come with one. And of course, the most complicated one, the rope walker. You have to make sure that the basket actually has the loops which aren't cracked. And of course, it should come with a correct length of string and its correct hook. All of which makes collecting these very, very difficult. And I sometimes find that it would be better if you just tried to find the ones that are still sealed on card and get those. And now a question for my viewers. Do you remember the 1987 action packs? If so, what was your impression of them? Do you have any theory as to why these things were not popular? These things sat on the shelves for so many years, racking up sale sticker after sale sticker. And the fact of the matter is, is that these things didn't cost any much more than a figure by itself. These things cost like $3 each. And I think they make really good enhancements to figures, especially driver figures who didn't come with a lot of accessories or figures that have lost their accessories. These make really good enhancements. They almost make the figure a deluxe figure, especially when you get something which is appropriate to their speciality. Although the action packs are an official Hasbro product, the wind-up mechanisms were actually made by Tomy. Not surprising, seeing as Tomy was better known back in 1987 for making Zoids, those wind-up robot kits.
For this review, I'll be taking a look at only the four G.I. Joe version. Yeah. And when you push the switch to the right, left, I should say, a rather unusual white nylon affair, which um, actually the G.I. Joe... Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.